This is a coronal section of the abdomen um, showing the diaphragm, the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. This is the right dome of the diaphragm and here is the left dome of the diaphragm. You notice that the right dome of the diaphragm is a little bit higher than the left dome of the diaphragm because the liver is, most of the liver is located beneath the right dome of the diaphragm. So this is the liver, right lobe of the liver. You can see on the left side there is an extension of the left lobe of the liver. The left lobe of the liver is connected to the undersurface of the diaphragm by a ligament. This is the left triangular ligament connecting the liver to the undersurface of the left dome of the diaphragm. Also on the left side you notice the fundus of the stomach which continues downwards into the body of the stomach. So this is the stomach here. Here, this is the, these are the crura of the diaphragm. And behind the crura of the diaphragm, the abdominal aorta enters into the abdomen. So this is, the, this, this is part of the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta is not exactly a midline structure. It's a little bit deviated to the left and close to the right side of the abdominal aorta is the inferior vena cava. So this is the inferior vena cava here. The inferior vena cava passes in a groove inside the liver and then arises from the liver, passes through the central tendon of the diaphragm to empty into the right atrium of the heart. And before leaving the liver, it receives the hepatic veins. On the left side, we can also notice part of the spleen. And also related to the hilum of the spleen, you can see here part of the pancreas. Of course, this is the tail of the pancreas, which approaches the hilum of the spleen. On the right side, there is the duodenum. This is the first part of the duodenum. And this is the descending or second part of the duodenum, which continues into the third part of the duodenum. You notice that inside the duodenum, you can see the folds, the mucosal folds, the plechi circularis or the valvoline colliventis. And within the C shape of the duodenum, there, there are remnants of pieces of the pancreas, that is the head of the pancreas, is located here. On the, on the left side is the tail related to the hilum of the spleen. This is the tail of the pancreas related to the spleen. And on the right side, the head of the pancreas is related to the C-shape of the duodenum. These are coils of small intestine, the jejunum and the ileum. Again, you can see the plechi circularis within them. Some of the coils, particularly of the ileum, they extend down into the pelvis, as you notice here. On the left side, this tube belongs to the descending colon. And on the posterior abdominal wall, you notice that in the midline, these are the lumbar vertebrae and the intervertebral discs in between them. Attached to the lumbar vertebrae on either side, this is the psoas major muscle. And from the iliac fossa of the hip bone arises the iliacus muscle. The two muscles, as you notice on both sides, they fuse together and form a common tendon that will be attached to the lesser trochanter of the femur. In the pelvis, you notice the urinary bladder and the superior surface of the urinary bladder is related to the coils of the small intestine, the ileum. On the sides of the urinary bladder, the muscle here is the obturator internus muscle. This muscle together with the obturator externus, which is present on the external aspect, 
it closes the obturator frame. This is the site of the obturator frame. It is closed by the obturator membrane, which is not very clear here. On the inside of the obturator membrane is obturator internus, while on the outside it is the obturator externus muscle. On the inside of the obturator internus, you can see that there is a very thin muscle which forms the pelvic diaphragm, mainly formed by the vater ani muscle. That is on the inside of obturator internus, the vater ani. Here, the levator ani is clasping the prostate gland lo located beneath the urinary bladder. And you can see that there is a, a piece of or part of the prostatic urethra can be shown here. The prostate lies on the urogenital diaphragm and beneath the urogenital diaphragm, we can see here, this is the root of the penis. On both sides of the perineum are the ischiopubic rami. In the midline is the bulb. The bulb contains the penile urethra and externally, outside the bulb, this, these muscle fibers belong to bulbospongiosis muscle. Bulbospongiosis. The bulb and the penile urethra or the bulbar part of the urethra and on either side you can also see here the corpor corpora cavernosa the, that are made of erectile tissue on both sides and the muscle which is attached to them is the ischiocavernosus muscle so this is the ischiocavernosus on this side and this is the ischiocavernosus on the other side this is the bulbospongiosis the crusts, both crura and the bulb, are made of erectile tissue. In this section, we can also notice the muscles of the anterolateral abdominal wall. Three layers of muscles are very clear here. The innermost one is the transverse abdominis, the middle one is the internal oblique, and the outer one is the external oblique muscle. Notice their attachment to the rib cage superiorly and to the ilium and iliac crest inferiorly.